So you made it through the base game all the way into Hoarfrost Reach. Good for you. It's time for the DLC. But this, ladies and gentlemen, this is where the challenge starts. And to that extent, welcome to my guide for getting started in Iceborne. So a couple things I'm going to cover are really basic, just things that you may have forgotten because you probably haven't done them in so long. And then we're going to go into some clutch call mechanics. And lastly, I want to take a look at some starter master rank sets to get the ball rolling. And the first thing is first, go right on over to the Palico Manager. And if you already haven't, make sure that you go to Palico Equipment and you put on that plunder blade. I don't know about you guys, but you know, I feel like we reached a point in world where I stopped using plunder blade because you know we didn't really need those materials. You were harming farming arch temperance, things like that. You're gonna be wanting to farm everything you can find. And to that extent, making sure that you have the plunder blade is going to help you greatly. In addition to that, while we're on the note of Palico, when it comes to Palico weapon, there's a couple things I'd recommend here. Uh, either going with something that has poison on it or alternatively something that has sleep on it. And the main reason for this is although you're not doing a ton of poison or a ton of sleep, you will see those effects procking in hunts and they'll just make things that much easier. Whereas your Palico really isn't doing all that much damage. Keeping up with Palicos, after we've done that, make sure you head on over to your room. Now this is especially important if you had gone through the uh, betas, because if you completed the betas and you did all the hunts in the betas, once you go on over here, you can talk to that same guy we were just talking to outside, but you can claim your add-ons and bonuses. Now, it's not going to pop anything up for me because I've already claimed them, but as you can see, there's quite a few things you can get. In particular, early weapon upgrade mats, great Jagras commendation, Bombaro, Tigrix, A-list certified pack, and these are just a ton of early materials that are going to really, really help to get things rolling for you in Iceborne. After that's done, the next thing we're going to do is take a look at the Steamworks because the Steamworks is basically a new mini game that was added in Iceborne and this thing essentially just poops out materials for you. It's almost completely random. <laughs> There's not much you really do besides mash buttons, but you will get a ton of materials and needless to say, it is great to have those things along. So going on over to the Steamworks here, I'm going to talk to this guy, the tech chief. And you'll have to put ore in the steamworks to get them to go. Once you've added some fuel in, you can help the steamworks. And then basically we need to guess whether it's going to be X, triangle, or square. Every time you get it right, the bar is going to go up. But if you get the bar all the way filled up, you can see how it's yellow right now. If you get all of it filled with red, you're going to end up with a bunch of stuff. And what I want to point out right now is if you look at the left-hand side of the screen, all that stuff you see popping up, that's just stuff I'm getting right now. I'm getting armor spheres, I'm getting max potions, I'm getting mega potions, there's a trank bomb that just came in, there's some mega nutrients, there's more mega nutrients, there's an armor sphere, and then every now and then you get the mega bonus. If you're lucky, the cats can actually help you do this by telling you where to go, but I mean, it's a lot of this is just random button pressing. There we go. Look at that. Full power. You'll get a fun little cutscene where everything goes crazy. We're going to skip that. I'll save it for you guys, but you can see ton of gourmet vouchers, heavy armor spheres, silver legs, celestial wig of ivory prints, which let you get some really, really nice stuff. And that whole list you saw right there was just a bunch of crap that I got from doing that mini game for a whopping, what did that take me? A minute, 20 seconds? Anyway, once you get your weapon print, go on over to the Elder Melder, because yeah. keep in mind, we are able to meld some good stuff. And in particular, with your prints, you can meld uh, the new Rarity 9 type stuff. So Pure Crystals, Dragon Bones, Fey Weaver Gems. I wouldn't suggest using it on these. You can quite literally just farm these up out in the world. But something like a Fey Weaver Gem and any other gems that you're having uh, trouble getting to drop in Master Rank, you can of course get those with the new Wiberian Prints. Now moving on from there, I want to take a moment to talk about the Clutch Claw because the Clutch Claw is, in my opinion, the most dynamic change to Monster Hunter we've had in a long time. 
it completely changes up the flow of fights, and there's a lot you can do with it. But the most basic thing, which you see me doing right now, is you just clutch claw on, you hit triangle, you do an attack, and that creates a weak spot on the monster. And now any subsequent attacks to that weak spot for roughly about a minute or two are going to do bonus damage. You can see how there's four little corner symbols when I'm hitting the monster in the weak spot. That indicates it's a weak spot. A little dot on the bottom indicates a crit. And if you don't see either of those things, it means you're just hitting a regular spot. Now, in addition to that, you can launch the monster by grappling on using the clutch claw. Now, there's two primary conditions to fulfill this, but the basic gist is to grapple onto the face, redirect it to a wall with circle, and then hit right trigger to send it flying into the wall. Now, the main things you have to keep in mind to accomplish this is one, the monster cannot be enraged, because if it's enraged, you can't redirect it and you can't launch it towards the wall. And two, you have to have something loaded into your slinger. If you don't have anything loaded into the slinger, you can't actually launch the monster. Now, it doesn't matter what's in the slinger. It could be red pit, it could be piercing pods, it could be moss. Pretty much anything you can pick up and put in the slinger, you can use to launch the monster. Now the main way to check is when you jump on the monster, if you hit circle and it redirects, you're going to be able to launch this thing. If you hit circle and the monster just doesn't even care, go ahead and hit triangle, create a weak point, and get on out of there. Because if it doesn't move when you hit circle, it is enraged, and if it doesn't move with circle, it sure as hell not going to move just by you putting a bunch of stuff into its face. Outside of that, there's a couple other cool things you can do with clutch calls, such as what you saw right here. I can grab the lawn and then go into the switch axe discharge, which is super satisfying to do. But the main use, of course, is going to be creating weak points and redirecting monsters into walls. Now, as for how much damage you're going to get on the monster, this is obviously going to vary greatly. Something that's small, like the Toto Kidachi, you'll see damage in the range of 100 to 200. Or something that's bigger, like an Anjana, you'll get damage in the range of 2 to 300. This also scales based on the health of the monster, as well as multiplayer settings. So if you're fighting an Elder Dragon in multiplayer, you can see damage upwards in the thousands from properly launching it into a wall. So needless to say, make sure you get this down, because being able to launch the monster into a wall is not only going to do a ton of damage, but it's also going to create a moment of opportunity where everyone can attack. Now before we wrap up, I want to take a look at two relatively early sets that can help you get things rolling in terms of Master Rank and Iceborne. Uh, the first is a Blade Master oriented set, and the second is going to be a Gunner set. Now, you really do need to focus on upgrading yourself sooner rather than later, because otherwise you are going to hit a progression wall in Iceborne where basically monsters hit like they're all arc tempered and you just can't quite survive. Uh, just to put things into perspective here, you know, taking a look at some endgame sets from the end of World, you can see defense 395, 414, 445, 429, 401. So, you know, kind of averaging in the 400s. The two master rank sets I have are at 625 and 683, and that is a staggering increase to your defense. So, anyway, jumping on into the sets, the first one is, as I mentioned, a Blade Master oriented set. You could run this with pretty much any bladed weapon. Um, and it'll do you right. So basic gist here is Jagras Helm, Mail, and Bam Braces, all alpha, and then use Beatodos for his alpha coil and his beta greaves. Uh, you have a fair amount of gem slots in here, in particular quite a few bigger gem slots, which will let us work in things like Tenderizer. Uh, I do suggest you have a earplug jewel because this set comes with level four earplugs already. And then I dropped a Vitality into my weapon to give me that health boost, but the reason I like this set so much for breaking your way into Master Rank is because both Jagras and Beatodos are Master Rank 1 monsters, so you can hunt them incredibly early and get this set together. And there's a lot of attractive things going on here. We have the health boost at level 3 to help maintain survivability. Uh, we have weakness exploit or slots for weakness exploit to help keep our damage up. We have that attack boost level 4 for a little boost to our raw as well as some more crit. And then in particular, having access to both earplugs level 5 and evade extender level 3 is going to really, really help your survivability, especially as you first start fighting these master rank monsters. Now, late game, you typically wouldn't need both of those skills. You know, a lot of players would consider those uh, crutch skills, basically. But if this is your first time making your way into what is essentially a G-rank experience, being able to block out those roars and being able to roll way the hell out of the way of whatever's coming at you is going to ensure that you're actually learning the fights as opposed to getting caught in a roar and one shot. So, all in all, a very well-rounded set that'll help um, kind of push you on in 
to Iceborne. Uh, in, particular, in particular, with the Polar Mobility, you don't need level 2, that's just what I had in there. Uh, but I would suggest having at least one point in Polar Mobility, because this is going to prevent any of the slowdown that occurs when you're in Hoarfrost Reach. Uh, basically just allowing you to you know, keep moving without getting bogged down as the snow builds up on your character. So even one point of that is actually very, very nice to have. Moving on to our second set, and this one is a Gunner set. It does take a little bit longer to get going because you're going to have to make your way up to Master Rank Level 3 hunts, but this set is largely based around the Nargakuga gear. Now just to show you what this thing can do in action, here's a quick clip. So as you saw right there, this set does absolutely disgusting amounts of damage, and I wish there was something that was earlier for Gunners, but Nargakuga is the first real set that is, in a sense, oriented towards Gunners. Uh, back in GU, Nargakuga is known for having basically the best light bowgun in the game, and uh, I'm actually using the Narga light bowgun right now, which has Rapid Fire Pierce 2. There's a couple other light bowguns that have Rapid Fire Pierce 2, but it is very very strong and I do think it has a good chance of kind of defining the uh, gunning meta for Iceborne. So to that extent this set is kind of built to amplify that. You're going to want the Narga Helm and Greaves, both Alpha, the Male and Beta. Uh, Kulu Vambrace's Beta will give you some point and critical boost and then the Bayo Coil Beta is pretty much just there because it has the slot for crit boost and it's going to give us the health boost at level 3. But when you pull this all together, I mean this very much resembles kind of an end game meta set from World. I mean we have crit eye at level 7, we have crit boost at level 3, we have peak performance at level 3, we have piercing shots at level 2. And then on top of that, we have the health boost at level 3 to help with survivability, and a Vey window level 3, which is just going to help us with our rolls and getting around. Um, so all in all, this set will basically probably carry you, once you make it to, to MR3 and can farm Narga, I would bet this set could carry you um, until the end of Master Rank, in all honesty, because with all the critical plus piercing shots plus spare shot, you do a disgusting amount of damage as a gunner. I've... Um, since getting this set done, I've, I've begun to actually like this uh, even more than my Switch Axe build. But either way, guys, that is going to wrap things up for this. Really just wanted to get a quick video out to kind of help folks, you know, get out there and, and get the ball rolling, if you will. Um, I am streaming a ton of Iceborne right now, so as I have time, I'm going to be breaking up those streams and uploading them to the channel. I know a lot of folks were asking about that. Um, and I do plan on doing a whole slew of build videos, but obviously, you know, takes time to get to end game and farm all this stuff up so stay tuned for that otherwise thanks for coming on by appreciate the support as always if this helps you out at all i'd appreciate y'all dropping a like and other than that i will see you guys next time